Python frameworks. So there are two big frameworks, Django and Flask, like I've mentioned. Here are my recommendations. Flask is pretty simple, but the problem is that, okay, let's just talk about quickly what a framework is. So if you were to do web development with Python, you would have to pull out your hair, not because of Python, Python is awesome, but because web development, you'd have to write all your own code. But if you use a framework with Python, like Flask, the benefit of that is that it does all the big heavy lifting for you that you don't have to worry about anymore. So creating servers and making things go online on a website, okay, make other people be able to see your website, it's super easy, you can do it with just a few lines of code. Flask is super lightweight. Again, as I'm talking, write these things down. Flask is pretty lightweight and it's cool, but the problem is because it's too lightweight, sometimes it's you have to write a lot of code to make things work. Whereas Django is a little bit more advanced looking and can be confusing sometimes, but it's what we call batteries included and it comes with a lot of libraries, a lot of big things, juicy, meaty things built in there. So think of it like a bunch of developers who gave up and had sleepless nights, uh, got probably divorces because they worked so hard and like got huge eye bags writing all this code and creating this amazing thing for you. And now you could just steal it with just a few lines of code and use it. Okay. So think of it, think of Django like that. And you could build things pretty quickly. Okay. So web development. Django developers make about $110,000 a year. Django is my more preferred framework. It's a little bit advanced, but if it's taught to you the right way, uh, you can pick it up fast and then you don't have to look back. Django is my preferred way to go. Write that down. Second, uh, best text editors or coding editors for Python. So there are a lot of them. There is Sublime Text, there is Atom, and then there is PyCharm. Sublime Text, and Atom, you can use interchangeably. Sublime Text, the annoying thing is it keeps asking for purchase, whereas Atom is completely free. So you guys can just download Atom to write your code in. PyCharm is my personal favorite IDE, or let's just simplify and say coding editor. It's my favorite, but I would recommend you guys to get into PyCharm around the second or third month mark of your coding because it is a little bit more technical and it is a little bit more advanced. And in the start, it might confuse you more than it helps you because of how big it is. But again, it's just a few practical things you need to know and then boom, 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 you're all caught up. All right. So for someone who wants to enter into web dev, what would you advise them? Django seems challenging with their setups and admin. Django is honestly pretty simple to get started with. Just the starting part is sometimes tricky, but once you get past a little bit of starting time, it's pretty easy to build things up really fast with Django. So again, I'm a huge fan of Django, but if you have extra time in your life, learn a little bit of Flask, maybe spend a week learning Flask, and that will show you the things you need to be doing with uh, web development and how you're doing them because you're going to be writing each line of code yourself. You'll get a good grasp of what the heck is going on. And then when you do them in Django, you'll just be like, oh, it's just like this thing I did in Flask, except it's easier now and it won't confuse you. Okay. So that's really it. <laughs>